More than one of you have asked in the comments on previous episodes for things like milk punch, koji, and cured egg yolks. How in the world have you not done one on onions yet? Onions, it's a fair point. It's hard to imagine a kitchen without onions. Across cultures, cuisines, and continents, onions are the starting point to basically every food that's worth eating. Onions are popular. How popular? Well, for one, they are the most widely consumed allium in the world. That means they beat out garlic. Sorry, garlic. Perhaps even more impressive than that, they consistently rank in the top two or three most consumed vegetables on planet Earth. Ask anyone why onions are so popular, and you're likely to get the exact same answer. Great flavor. And the ability to impart that great flavor into countless dishes. Onion flavor works a lot like garlic flavor. So if you remember from our garlic bread video, which you should watch if you haven't yet, flavor is only created when cell walls are damaged. When you break an onion cell wall by cutting, chopping, or chewing, you release an enzyme called alanase, and that goes to work on a sulfur-containing compound to start producing flavor. At the same time, another enzyme goes to work to create a very special compound called propane thiol S oxide, or PSO. If you've ever cried when chopping onions, you have PSO to thank for that. And likely, a not very sharp knife. That's right, a dull knife will actually damage more cell walls than a sharp one, and that will create more PSO and more crying. Onions are amazing because there are so many ways to control and manage their flavor to get just the result that you're looking for. And the first way is shopping. At the supermarket, you'll always find a handful of varieties, usually yellow onions, white onions, red onions, and what are called the sweet varieties, such as Vidalia and Walla Walla. For cooking, yellow onions are king because they produce the most strong onion flavor. Now, cooking mellows that flavor, so you gotta start with something big and intense. But yellow onions, for that exact same reason, can be overpowering when eaten raw. Milder white and red onions are much nicer for raw applications. But don't forget that all onions can be made more mild for eating raw by simply rinsing the slices after cutting. Just add your sliced onions to a bowl of water, let them sit for about 15 minutes, and then drain and dry. This step removes the pungent flavor compounds that were formed on the cut surfaces. Now, about those sweet varieties. Now, some of them certainly do contain more sugar than yellow onions, but the sweet actually refers more to the fact that they're unable to produce that onion flavor in the first place. I'll explain. Now, the pungent flavor compounds in onions contain a sulfur atom. Therefore, it might not come as a surprise that the sulfur content of the soil in which the onions are grown can actually have a big impact on the intensity of their flavor. The sweet varieties are grown in really specific specific regions, such as Vidalia, Georgia, or Walla Walla, Washington, that are known for having really sulfur-poor soils. Less sulfur makes it into the onion as it matures, and therefore less pungent onion flavors produced during cutting. Crazy, right? Speaking of cutting, we have to talk about cutting, because this is where you have a ton of control as a cook. Depending on how you cut an onion, you can create different amounts of onion flavor. This minced onion has more flavor than this cross-grain sliced onion, which has more flavor than this pole-to-pole -pole sliced onion, which has more flavor than this smashed whole onion. Uh, okay, so I I guess no one does that with onions. But the point is, the more slicing, chopping, and cell wall breaking that you do, the more onion flavor you create. And yes, you heard me right. Slicing an onion pole to pole or with its natural grain will damage less cell walls and create less flavor than slicing across the grain, which damages many more cell walls. Oh, and a cross grain slice of onion will fall apart much more readily during cooking than a more structurally sound pole to pole slice. So use that in your cooking as needed. But that's not all. Even the part of the onion you cut will make a difference. The outer layers contain more of those flavor precursors than the inner layers, and so they'll be more flavorful. Wow, onions. Wow. While we're deep into cutting, I wanna talk about two options for slicing onions pole to pole. You can slice straight up and down like this and make a fine sliced onion. I mean, look at those. Those are fine sliced onions. But if you're looking for a sliced onion with a little more style and grace, you can follow the natural radial pattern of the onion and angle your blade as you go. The result is cleaner, prettier slices. That's all, but they sure are pretty. Even order of operations matters when it comes to cutting an onion, at least when it comes to dicing and mincing. Now in this case, it's not about flavor, it's about ease of execution. To dice an onion, you need to make both vertical and horizontal cuts. Now for most humans, the horizontal cuts are more challenging, so you wanna set yourself up for success. Check out this experiment. If you make your vertical cuts first, you compromise the structure of the onion, making your horizontal cuts a lot more difficult. See how much trouble I'm having with this? Simply reversing the order of operations and doing your horizontal cuts first makes it a lot easier. Easier. So you check it out. You'll also notice that for the horizontal cuts, I start at the heel of the blade and pull it through in a slicing motion to the tip. That helps the knife glide through the onion and it's a lot better than starting in the middle of the knife and sawing back and forth. I hear some of you saying right now, but I hate horizontal cuts and I never wanna make one in my entire life. Damn, what can I do? Well, like with most things in life, you can totally avoid it and it's fine. You just need to make an additional cut on each half so you're working with onion quarters like this. Then you just slice vertically, knock it over 90 degrees and slice vertically again 
again. Okay, one final note on cutting. We all know that prepping ahead of time is one of the cook's most powerful tools. And you can prep all kinds of vegetables pretty far in advance with little loss of flavor or texture. Not so with onions. That cascade of chemical reactions you set off with your knife continues as onions sit. And that lovely onioniness quickly gives way to harsh and unpleasant flavors. Day old cut onions, are pretty gross. So best bet is to just cut them right before you need them. If you do find yourself with sliced onions that were cut a day or two ahead, we did find one application where they actually work pretty well, and that is caramelized onions. And that is what we call a segue. Let's go to the kitchen. We're gonna make a batch of Cook's Illustrated senior editor Lon Lamb's recipe for caramelized onions because they are delicious, they're much faster than your standard caramelized onion recipe, and they demonstrate the beautiful power of water. That's right, we're gonna start with sliced onions, three quarters of a cup of water, some salt and oil in a covered 12 inch skillet. And we'll cook them this way until the water evaporates as steam and the onions collapse and soften. Then we remove the lid and, okay, these do look pretty sad at this point. But here's the thing, the early part of caramelizing onions the traditional way isn't about browning at all. It's about collapsing and tenderizing and releasing sugars. And water makes that happen faster. Then we just ditch the lid, reduce the heat, and alternate between stirring and pressing the onions into the pan for just 15 to 20 minutes. All in, we get silky, tender, richly flavored caramelized onions on about half an hour. And once we've done that, we are mere minutes away from the world's greatest expression of oniony goodness. You know what I'm talking about onion dip. This one is rich with sour cream and yogurt, packed with caramelized onions, and finished with chives and black pepper. Just one of the many incredible things you can do with caramelized onions. Another versatile onion staple that every fridge deserves is pickled red onions. And these couldn't be easier. We just make a pickling liquid with vinegar, water, sugar, and salt. And then we just heat that up real good and pour it over a pile of sliced red onions. These guys are ready to eat after about eight hours of fridge time, and they're happy to hang out there for another two weeks while you figure out how to put them on, well, everything. I love them on sandwiches, and especially on salad. But that is not the ultimate way to eat onions. This is how to eat onions. Nah, no, 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 no. come on, it's this dip. Obviously it's the dip. So, did I convince you to try onions? If you do so, let me know in the comments what you think of them, and we'll see you next time.